وأذن في الناس بالحج يأتوك رجالا وعلى كل ضامر يأتين من كل فج عميق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Last lesson, we began reading through the second sub-chapter. And this is a very important chapter in this book, the book of Hajj. This is one of the most important chapters. So last lesson, alhamdulillah, we covered the first mas'ala, the first issue which speaks about the pillars of Hajj. And there were four pillars that were discussed. We said that if anyone misses one of these pillars, then the Hajj is null and void. There's nothing that a person can do to make up for missing these pillars pillars or any one of them in this lesson we're going to move on to the next issue which is الحج, the mandatory acts of hajj the authors they mentioned seven in total the first one الإحرام من الميقات, الإحرام من الميقات له شرعا, to perform ihram at the designated points which have been set in the sharia so we mentioned from the pillars is that a person he enters into ihram, entering into the state of ihram is a pillar. But to do so at the designated points which have been set by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his sunnah, this is wajib. This is something which is from the wajibat. So we mentioned previously that there are five miqat al makaniya There are five designated points, locations which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam set. It's not permissible for the one who intends to perform Hajj or Umrah to cross these five miqat without assuming ihram, without being in the state of ihram. It's not permissible. And these five miqat, there is two lines of poetry which the poet says, عِرْقُ الْعِرَاقِ يَلَمْلَمُ الْيَمَنِ وَبِذِي الْحُلَيْفَةِ يُحْرِمُ الْمَدَنِ وَالشَّامُ جُحْفَةُ إِمَّ رَرْتَ بِهَا وَلِأَهْلِ نَجْدٍ قَرْنُ فَاسْتَبِنِ عِرْق referring to that to irq and this was the fifth miqat um, which there is a difference of opinion regarding irq al iraq is the miqat for the people of iraq it's actually called that to irq but because of the uh, line of poetry this you have to follow a certain pattern and so you sometimes you summarize and miss out certain words so that the poetry flows so irq al iraq that to irq is the Miqat for the people of Iraq. Then he said, Yalam lam ul Yemen. Yalam lam for the people of Yemen. Wabi dhil hulayfa, dhil hulayfa yuhrimu al Madani is where the people of Medina they assume ihram. Washam ujuhfa. Juhfa is for the people of Sham. Imma rarta biha if you cross um, from this point. Wali ahli najdin karnun. And for the people of Najd, Riyadh, and so on, and those coming from that direction, karnul manazil. Karnun. فَاسْتَبِنِي So know and let that be clear to you. طيب, this is quite beneficial, easy to memorize inshallah. طيب, so if a person, he is going to be traveling directly through these miqat or he is going to travel past these miqat at a location which is adjacent to them, whether that is through land, through air or through sea, then he has to Assume ihram before crossing them. So this is the first, the first wajib. Assuming ihram before crossing the designated locations or miqat points. The second, al-wuqufu bi'arafata ila layli liman ataha nahara, is to remain at arafa until nightfall for the one who comes to arafa during the day. So we did mention that from the pillars of Hajj is. الوقوف بعرفة remain at عرفة on the ninth of the الحجة. But here the wajib act refers to those who come and enter into عرفة during the day. If someone comes during the day and enters عرفة, it's wajib for him to remain until مغرب. Until مغرب. This is the second pillar. Why is that? لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وقف إلى الغروب. Because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم remained there until مغرب. Until sunset. كما سيأتي في صفة حجته. As is going to come in the description of his Hajj, وقال, and he also said, خذوا عني مناسككم, take your rituals from me. So because of this command of the Prophet ﷺ and his action 
in clarifying and teaching the people through his actions, it's the scholars have derived that it is wajib for a person to remain at Arafah if he enters it during the day. So this excludes those people who enter Arafah after Maghrib. If a person comes and enters into Arafah after Maghrib, then it's not wajib for him to remain there for a set duration rather. Even if he stays there for a short period and leaves, then that is permissible and he doesn't have to offer an expiation or anything like that. So the second pillar is for those people who enter into Arafah during the day, it's wajib for them to remain until Maghrib. Tayyib. And when the scholars say Al-Wuquf, Wuquf is the master of Waqafa. Waqafa literally means to stand. Waqafa means to stand. But here what uh, is intended is to remain in Arafah. Whether a person stands, sits or lies down, even if a person sleeps, then that's all permissible. But it's better for a person to uh, perform dua as the Prophet ﷺ did at the Mount of Arafah, standing and uh, raising one's hand and making dua and saying la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah lahu al-mukur hamdud wa kulli shayin qadir to the end of it inshallah all of this is going to come when we speak about the description of hajj so that's the second wajib act the third wajib act is al-mabitu bi muzdalifata laylat an-nahr ila muntasaf al-layl is to spend the night at muzdalifa on the night of an-nahr until nightfall Islamically, the night begins at Maghrib. So when Maghrib comes in, the new day starts. طيب. So what they're saying is, once Maghrib has entered, so on the 9th, once Maghrib enters, it's the 10th. It's the 10th. So you move from Arafah and you go to this location, which is Muzdalifa. So spending the night at Muzdal Muzdalifa on the night of the 10th until midnight. So this is the third wajib act. And this wajib act is for those in wafaha qablahu for those who arrive for those who arrive at muzdalifa before midnight they have to remain there until midnight lifi'lihi sallallahu alayhi wasallam dhalik due to the action of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam did this shaykh abu musa hafizahullah he mentions a correction qultu al asahu an yaqula ila al fajr What's more correct is for them to say until Fajr, to remain and spend the night at Muzdalifa until Fajr. Illa dha'afa. So the exception should only be made for those who are weak and those who are accompanying them. Remaining until Fajr, this is what's wajib. But there's an exception which is made for the people who are weak and those who accompany them. فَيُرَخَّصُ لَهُمْ الدَّفْعُ مِنْ مُزْدَلِفَةً بَعْدَ غُرُوبِ الْقَمَرِ as for these people who have been given this allowance, then they can move from Muzdalifa once the moon has set, once the moon disappears, which is between midnight and Fajr, just like the sun, the moon sets, it disappears, you no longer see it. طيب, so this is the correction which is mentioned by Sheikh Abu Musa, that we should change Mutasaf al-Layl ila al-Fajr. You have to remain at Muzdalifa, until Fajr. This is what's wajib. Unless you are accompanying someone who is weak or you yourself are weak, then you can leave once the moon has set, once the moon has disappeared, which is around 2 to 3 o'clock. Now, that's when the moon disappeared, when I was there anyway. So this is the third wajib act. The fourth wajib act, Al-Mabitu Bimina Layali Yamit Tashriq. Remaining or spending the night at Mina during the nights of at tashriq Ayam at tashriq is the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th of the hijjah The authors are saying you need to spend the nights of these three nights at Mina. You have to spend the nights during these three nights at Mina. Shaykh Abu Musa, he mentions a correction related to this. He says, Qultu al-wajibu laylatan. What's wajib is to spend the 11th and the 12th, two nights. These two nights, that's what's wajib upon everyone. وَالثَّالِثَةُ مُسْتَحَبَّ As for the 13th, then this is something which is recommended. Something which is recommended. The fifth obligatory act, رَمْيُ الْجَمَرَاتِ مُرَتَّبًا is the stoning of jamarat. Jamarat are the pillars which are being erected in Mina. So a person, he goes there and he stones them and there's like a 
like a bowl it looks like a bowl where the stones land within that that's where the stoning takes place and there's three of these pillars next to each other big medium and small jamratul kubra wal wusta wa sughra they call it so stoning them in order this is the fifth obligatory act sheikh abu musa mentions a clarification he says when the authors have said murattaban in order he says a as sughra First, you have to stone the small one. This is where the order comes in. You have to stone the small one. ثم الوسطى, then the medium one. ثم الكبرى, then the big one. وهذه في أيام التشريق. And stoning them takes place during Eid, on, on the day of Eid, which is the 10th, as well as the 11th, 12th, and 13th. Four days consecutively. So during the 11th, 12th, and 13th, when you stone them, you need to stone them in this order. You stone the small one, then the middle one, then the large one, in this order. As for the stoning on the day of Eid, فَيَرْمِي الْجَمْرَةَ الْكُبْرَى فَقَطْ You stone the large one only, which is the day of the 10th of the Hijjah, and this is where most of the rites of Hajj are fulfilled. You only need to stone the major one, the big one. That's the only one you do. As for the 11th, 12th, and 13th, you stone all three of them, beginning with the smallest, then the medium, then the largest. So that's the fifth obligatory act. The sixth obligatory act, الحلقة والتقصير To shave the hair or to trim it. لقوله تعالى, due to his saying the Most High, محلقين رؤوسكم ومقصرين In Surah Al-Fatih, so Ayah 27, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, لَتَدْخُلُنَّ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ You will surely enter the sacred masjid مُحَلِّقِينَ رُؤُوسَكُمْ مُقَصِّرِينَ While your heads are shaven, some of you, and others' head, hair is shortened. لَا تَخَافُونَ Without any fear. And so the scholars mentioned that because Allah mentioned shaving first, He mentioned them before those whose hair are trimmed, the scholars said that shaving is better. And likewise, well, he he said, Allahu alayhi wa sallam, and due to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doing this. Wa amruhu bidhalik, and he also commanded with it to either shave or to trim. Tayyib. So, the sixth uh, mandatory act is to shave or trim the hair. Shave or trim the hair. For men, it's best to shave. For women, they only have the option of trimming. And from the evidence which the scholars use to show that shaving is better is the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Allahumma arham al-muhallikeen. Allahumma arham al-muhallikeen. Three times. Oh Allah, have mercy upon the those who have shaved their hair. Have mercy upon them three times. Then they said, how about the one who have trimmed their head? He said, wal-muqassireen. Wal-muqassireen. Another riwayah, Allahumma ghafir lil-muhallikeen. Forgive, forgive them instead of have mercy upon them. So this is the sixth wajib act. The seventh wajib act, tawafu al-wada' li ghayri al-ha'idhi wa al-nufasa. Tawaf al is the farewell tawaf, the farewell tawaf, but there is an exception for those who are on their menstrual or postnatal cycles. These women who are in these states, they are exempted from this obligatory act. If they are in this state and their time to travel has come, then they can leave without uh, fulfilling this obligatory act and there's no, uh, wa there's no kafara upon them, there's no expiation due from them. لحديث ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما أمر الناس يكون آخر عهدهم بالبيت إلا أنه خفف عن المرأة الحائض. The people were commanded to make the tawaf around the Kaaba the final rite, except that the women who were on their menstrual cycle they were excused from this. And this hadith is reported by Bukhari and Muslim. So the final obligatory act after a person has completed his uh, hajj is to perform a farewell tawaf and this farewell tawaf should be the last thing that a person does before uh, departing from Mecca so this is something which is delayed until a person is ready to travel and leave Mecca this is the farewell tawaf that's what's understood from this hadith that this should be the last rite and the last thing which they perform in Mecca before leaving Okay, so we've covered seven obligatory acts. Entering into ihram at the correct miqat, wuquf bi arafa, remaining at arafa until nightfall for the one who enters during the day, spending the night at muzdalifa instead of muntasaf al we said until fajr, 
Al Mabitu Bimina Layal Yam Tashik remaining at Mina on the eleventh and twelfth. This is what's wajib. The thirteenth is Mustahab. Stoning Jamarat and has to be in order, in sequence. So on the tenth you only stone the big the big one. On the eleventh, twelfth and thirteenth you stone all of them, starting from the smallest till the largest. So small, medium, large. Sixth is to shave or trim. Shaving is better in the case of men, although they are allowed to trim, and women are only allowed to trim. And the final one is the farewell tawaf, and this should be the last thing that people should perform before leaving Mecca. And this is something which the women who are on the menstrual cycle or postnatal bleeding are excused from. Finally, فَمَنْ تَرَكَ وَاجِبًا مِنْ هَذِهِ الْوَاجِبَاتِ عَامِدًا أَوْ نَاسِيًا جَبَرَهُ بِدَمٍ وَصَحَّ حَجُّهُ Whoever leaves off an obligatory act from the obligatory acts which have been mentioned, if he does so intentionally or forgetfully, then he is allowed to make up for it by blood, yani sacrifice. وَصَحَّ حَجُّهُ And his hajj will be valid if he performs the expiation to restore what he has missed from the obligatory acts. لِمَا ثَبَتْ عَنْ إِبْنَ عَبَّاسِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمَا And this is something which is taken from Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما أنه قال who said من نسي من نسكه شيئا whoever forgets to perform a right أو تركه or he leaves it off if he forgets or he leaves it he leaves it off فليرق دما then let him shed some blood يعني let him sacrifice رواه الدار قطني والبيهقي وغيرهما وهو ثابت عن باس this is something which is authentic to Ibn Abbas and this is the statement of Ibn Abbas which is why there's a difference of opinion between the scholars some of them said no you don't have to because this is not something which the Prophet said this is the statement of Ibn Abbas but the majority of the scholars the majority of the scholars they have taken by this statement of Ibn Abbas and the Shaykh Abu Musa said this is Ahwat this is safer this is the safer option for a person to take طيب. so we are going to stop here inshallah we've covered all of the wajibat next lesson we're going to finish this chapter by speaking about the sunan the recommended acts subhanakallahu bihamdik shadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk